Hello, it's Saturday the 24th of September. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Adidang's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us today. I'm Mark Broom. We start at the nation's top office. President Park and hye gathered her cabinet ministers and top government officials at Chongwa Day on this Saturday to assess their achievements since her inauguration and to discuss ways to invigorate her key policy drives. The president also slammed the National Assembly for its passage of a motion to dismiss the agriculture minister. Our presidential office correspondent Song ji -son starts us off. Three and a half years after the Park administration took over the reins, more than a hundred high-level officials and cabinet members gathered to assess and follow up on ways to rev up momentum for the president's key policy drives. Saying she has never forgotten her election pledges, President Bakuni said the cabinet must build strong economic and social fundamentals that last for generations to come. <laughs> 오직 하나 바로 국민의 삶이 삶입니다. 국민들의 삶이 조금이라도 나아져야만 그 정부는 성공한 정부라는 평가를 받을 수 있으며 지금 우리는 그 과정을 열심히 수행해 나가고 있습니다. 늘 국민의 눈높이에서 정책을 펼치고 국민의 작은 소리까지도 귀 기울여 들어서 말이 아닌 행동으로 국민에게 다가가야 합니다. The president underscored the severity of current crisis with North Korea's increased nuclear threats and the recent earthquakes. She also criticized lawmakers for only focusing on political disputes. President Bak said the National Assembly's proposal to dismiss newly appointed Agriculture Minister Kim Jae-su was a reflection of the lack of cooperation and coexistence within parliament. Despite the many difficulties the nation is facing, President Bak urged her cabinet members to gear for the remaining year and a half of her term to ensure that the public feel the benefits of the government's reform and innovation drives. Song ji -sun, Arirang News. Now, North Korea is remaining steadfast in its commitment to the development of an ever-growing nuclear arsenal. Pyongyang's top diplomat told the UN General Assembly that the weapons are a self-defense measure against the United States and its allies. Kim ji reports. In spite of global condemnation, North Korea has vowed to continue strengthening its nuclear weapons capability. The regime says it will never abandon its nuclear deterrence while it's being threatened by other nuclear-armed states, such as the U.S. In an address to the U.N. General Assembly on Friday, North Korean Foreign Minister Lee Yong ho said the move is a righteous self-defense measure. Going nuclear armed is the policy of our state. As long as there exists a nuclear weapon state which is hostile towards us, our national security and peace on the Korean Peninsula can be defended only with a reliable nuclear deterrence. The minister also blamed the U.S. for making the peninsula one of the world's most dangerous hotspots for a nuclear war by conducting multiple military exercises with South Korea to try and topple the leadership in Pyongyang. North Korea's defiance comes despite escalating international pressure for it to denuclearize, including from states that have traditionally supported the regime. In his address to the UN General Assembly, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov urged North Korea to abandon its nuclear missile programs and return to the long sought six party denuclearization talks, which include the two Koreas, the US, China, Russia, and Japan. Meanwhile, discussions are already underway on another round of UN sanctions on North Korea amid speculation Pyongyang could be gearing up for yet another nuclear test just weeks after it conducted its fifth test on September 9th. Kim ji Arirang News. A senior U.S. official has stated that there will be no more negotiations about the deployment of the THAAD missile defense system in South Korea. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Daniel Russell says 
The decision has been reached and Thad will be deployed to the south as planned. His comments quash speculation that Seoul and Washington could modify their plans to induce cooperation from China to enforce tougher sanctions on its longtime ally North Korea. Russell also said the U.S. is confident a new U.N. resolution will be adopted against Pyongyang imposing new sanctions and tightening existing ones. He added that the new punitive measures would be aimed at preventing North Korea from further developing its nuclear weapons program. Police in the U.S. state of Washington have confirmed that four women have been killed and one man wounded in a shooting at a mall in Burlington. The shooting happened at the Cascade Mall at around 7 p.m. local time on Friday. The authorities have released a picture of the suspected gunman who fled the scene and is still at large and armed. The Washington State Patrol says they believe there is only one shooter. The motives of the shooter have not yet been revealed, but the FBI is reportedly investigating the attack as a potential act of terrorism. Since the suspect is still on the run, local residents have been told to stay inside and lock their doors. Authorities in Egypt say 162 bodies have now been retrieved from the Mediterranean after a boat carrying hundreds of migrants sank. Many of the dead are believed to be children and women who were unable to swim away when the overcrowded fishing vessel sank. The migrants were attempting to reach Europe. Officials say the search is ongoing as scores of people remain missing. Most of the 163 people who were rescued were Egyptians but also included Sudanese, Eritreans, a Syrian and an Ethiopian. Now, in the United States, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has received a pre-debate boost, winning the endorsement of his ex-primary foe, Ted Cruz. In a Facebook post, the Texas senator said that after many months of careful consideration, he has decided to vote for Trump. Laying out his reasons, Cruz said he found Hillary Clinton wholly unacceptable. With the first debate due for Monday night in New York, the latest Reuters Ipsos poll has Clinton with a four percentage point advantage over Trump, 41 percent to Trump's 37 percent. Monday's debate is expected to draw a Super Bowl-sized TV audience of 100 million Americans. This according to most commentators. The push to seal the TTIP free trade deal before the end of U.S. President Barack Obama's term has failed. The trade minister of Slovakia, which currently holds the EU's six-month rotating presidency, says it's not realistic to reach the final agreement on the EU USFTA by the end of Obama's administration. The decision puts the fate of the transatlantic trade and investment partnership in the hands of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, who are both running on anti-trade deal platforms. Mass demonstrations against the deal have been held across Europe in recent months amid concerns it will give corporations power over governments as well as seriously threatened jobs and quality controls. Now back here in Korea, a government-led restoration effort is expected to start soon to help those affected by the powerful earthquake that jolted southeastern Korea earlier this month. The municipal government of Gyeongsangbuk-do province says it may need around 12.5 million U.S. dollars to repair public facilities and homes damaged during the magnitude 5.8 quake and uh, the aftershocks that followed. It says the lion's share will be spent on restoring historical relics in the city of Gyeongju. The funds are expected to be provided within three days once the estimate is evaluated and confirmed by related government ministries. The central government has vowed to uh, come up with its own restoration plans by the end of this month. Now it's fall here in Korea and buskers are back out on the streets, entertaining the masses and trying to make a living in the process. And in one Korean city, they're getting some professional help. Park Se-young has a story. In larger cities like Seoul, street performers or buskers are a common sight. But over in Cheonju in Cheolabokdo province, which has a much smaller population than the capital, the city's buskers are much more active than in other regions. That's thanks to an agency called the Buskers Factory, which also encourages teams of artists to collaborate. People who are already performing in Cheonju or artists who are interested in busking can join us and become part of a new lineup. The agency even provides practice rooms for the artists. 
We work on weekdays and practice individually on the weekends. And on performance days, the teams get together. The agency was established over two years ago by members of a university music club with a mission to expand the opportunities for local street performers. It has since grown to nearly 200 members and is currently working to boost Chunju's youth culture. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, finally, taking a look at the weekend weather. And most of the country is under partly cloudy skies this evening. It's going to be fairly cool, with the low dipping to 15 degrees Celsius overnight. Sunday will be pretty pleasant in most places, with lots of sunshine and highs nationwide in the mid to high 20s. With that, let's take a look at the weather in Korea and around the world. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and stay tuned to Adirang TV. We will be back with our next newscast. That's coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time. So until then, goodbye.